Well, let's look at one application of a swap, and this is to transform a liability. And we'll keep our Microsoft and Intel uh, example alive here. So let's uh, have a look at, let's set up the scenario. Microsoft owes 100 million at LIBOR plus 10. Remember, we said that they must have floating rate external debt, which is why they're willing in the swap to pay the fixed rate. So they, they owe 100 million at LIBOR plus 10. Intel owes 100 million at 5.2. Now we're going to keep this example going for quite a while. So, you know, just uh, keep remembering that these are the, the rates on what they owe. Microsoft owes LIBOR plus 10, but doesn't want that, wants a fixed rate. So is willing to give Intel 5%. There, now it has the fixed rate. Intel agrees to give Microsoft LIBOR. So there's the floating rate portion taken care of. Microsoft will get it from Intel and pass it on to what it owes. But it's not perfect. Microsoft owes LIBOR plus 10 and is willing to pay 5 to get LIBOR. So what is Microsoft's net interest rate now? Well, it is the 5% that it's paying Intel. Plus, it is LIBOR plus 10 minus LIBOR which nets out to just 10 basis points. So their net interest rate on a fixed term is 5.1% at this point. Intel, on the other hand, is agreeing to pay Microsoft LIBOR in exchange for receiving 5%, because it owes 100 million at a fixed rate of 5.2, and it doesn't want to pay the fixed rate, it wants to pay LIBOR. So it'll pay Microsoft the LIBOR. Microsoft will take care of its fixed rate component. But it's not perfect. Intel is paying out LIBOR and receiving 5, but having to pay 5.2. So N Intel's net interest rate now is LIBOR plus 20 basis points. LIBOR plus 20 basis points. So one thing I want to show you here before we get to introducing uh, our, our, our middleman, our financial uh, services company that actually sets this up. We're just assuming that they're going uh, straight towards each other here. Let's have, uh, let's, I want you to note this, uh, this important thing. Let's look at the original, the original net uh, aggregate interest that is being paid. Microsoft is paying LIBOR plus 10. LIBOR plus 10 basis points and Intel is paying 5.2%. So if we add these together aggregately, we have an outflow of interest of LIBOR plus 5.3% between the two companies. Now let's have a look at the new relationship that they have after they've entered into the swap. And we'll look at the new aggregate interest rate that's being paid as opposed to the old. Intel is paying LIBOR plus 20 basis points. And Microsoft is paying 5.1%. So if we add this up, what do we get? We're getting LIBOR plus 5.3%. Notice in this particular case that the aggregate interest has been preserved. Under the original situation, when you took what both companies were paying, they were paying out LIBOR plus 5.3%. In the new interest rate situation, they are paying out LIBOR plus 5.3%. So the net interest expense between the two companies added together is constant, remains the same. It hasn't decreased or it hasn't increased. We're going to see that bringing in a financial services company will increase their expense because this example so far ignores commissions. We've ignored commissions. To find a situation where two non-financial companies uh, can perfectly uh, match up what they need without an intermediary, well, that's not going to happen. That typically doesn't happen. Uh, so you want some financial intermediary in there. Well, that will tend to increase the interest expense. However, that being said, the financial intermediaries are very good at identifying companies that would benefit by borrowing one way and entering into a swap, thereby both lowering the, the borrowing costs for both firms so that the going from the original situation to the new situation would actually decrease the net interest expense that's being paid. 
We're starting to get close to the why the swaps market is so big. If we can move from a situation where we can go from LIBOR plus 5.3 to something lower, even with the commissions added in, there's the motivation to do it, right? So let's have another look at another application before we move on. Well, if we can transform a liability, we must be able to transform an asset because my liability is some other company's asset. It must be able to be done, right? So let's set up our scenario. Microsoft owns $100 million of marketable securities and is receiving a fixed rate of 4.7% on that. Intel owns $100 million and is receiving LIBOR minus 20. Microsoft is receiving fixed but would like to receive floating. Intel is receiving floating but would like to receive fixed. So what's going to happen again, we, we've already seen the situation. Microsoft is going to pay Intel 5%. Intel is going to pay Microsoft a floating rate. Uh, it's the same example. We're just continuing on with the same example with the same swap of cash flows. So what is Microsoft's net interest earned or net interest in? Well, they're paying out 5, but they're getting 4.7 in. So right away, they're down 30 basis points, but they're receiving LIBOR. So their net interest in is LIBOR. They get that in minus 30 basis points because they're receiving 4.7, but paying out 5. Intel, on the other hand, is paying to Microsoft LIBOR, but receiving 5%. So externally, they're receiving LIBOR minus 20, but they're paying out 20. Uh, sorry, they're paying out LIBOR. So they're down 20 basis points right away, but they're receiving 5%. If they're receiving 5 and they're down 20 basis points, their net interest in is 4.8%. So again, let's look at the before and after scenario. If we look at the total interest earned across both companies, we will get 4.7% fixed plus LIBOR minus 20. And if you uh, group the terms, you will end up with 4.5% plus LIBOR. And if we look at after the fact, let's see what happens here. We have 4.8% in plus LIBOR minus 30. LIBOR minus 30 basis points. And that will give us 4.5% plus LIBOR. Again, everything is preserved. There's no leakage in the system. There's no savings. And there's no increased earnings in the system either. And no loss due to commissions because we haven't introduced that yet. We're going to. So, so far, we've preserved everything. That's not going to continue. And again, let me stress, that's why the swaps market is so huge. Is because you can change not just the components of the interest you receive, but the aggregate of interest that you pay or receive.